on this episode of Conversations with Rich Bennett. Follow your heart and know that talent is great. You know, it's, it's wonderful to be talented, to have uh, sort of these magic hands that God has given you. But it doesn't all rely on that. It takes a lot of work and a lot of sacrifice. Coming to you from the Freedom Federal Credit Union Studios, Harford County Living presents Conversations with Rich Bennett. Come on, you're faster than me. Guys, we've been together. I got a phone call. Jack is 24 and 13. Oh man, you already said it. I was going to ask her. She remembered the date. As most of you know, I run HartfordCountyLiving.com. And for years, well, first of all, when I started in 2012, it was hard to find good positive news. <laughs> it's still hard to find good positive news. That's why I don't put any negative news on there. Um, and I've, I always feature an artist of the week, a restaurant of the week, business of the week, and a nonprofit of the week. And lately, it's been hard to find an artist of the week because I always want to... One of the things I like is when they have a website because you have the about section. It makes it a lot easier to write up the article. And when you, not everybody has social media. So when I write up the article on my website, you can't really pull a lot of stuff off of social media, whether it be photos, you know, and all that stuff. So I had this gentleman contact me. He emailed me. And I'm looking at his website. I'm like, holy cow, what doesn't he do? He does everything. So I have John Keaton on, who is a former Air Force. He's an artist. He's an author. He's a musician. He's a songwriter. He's uh, a designer as well, right? That's right. Uh, what don't you do? Uh, never late for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, he's not a podcaster yet. No. Yeah, that no. might be the next uh, thing. That's my next thing, right? <laughs> so, well, first of all, welcome, John. Thank um, you so much. How did you get into, I guess, the arts? When did it start? Well, uh, I'll tell you. I was uh, I was about five years old. Okay. And I was often, uh, my an aunt of mine would, would babysit me, would take care of me uh, when my parents were working or whatever. And I, li- I stayed at her house. And, of course, she couldn't speak or communicate or hear even. Right. So I was about five. So we arranged to have a blackboard in the kitchen. Uh, and uh, whenever I wanted to communicate something with her, I would simply draw it on the blackboard. Okay? So there was like a little step stool, and I would step up there with the chalkboard and sort of – like, for example, I wanted a, a glass of Hawaiian punch, you know, which right. is, you know, typical for a five-year-old. So <laughs> I would draw the can of Hawaiian punch and, and, a, and a glass to explain to her what I wanted. Right. And that was my way of communicating with her. Interesting. So I enjoyed doing this so much that I was nonstop drawing on the blackboard. And then they all sort of caught wind of that, and then they got me colored chalk. So then I would be – doing color and ever since that was my first exposure to uh i guess visual communication right okay so, you know that's how i basically got into art is uh through communicating with my uh my handicap aunt so wow. it's a wonderful story and it's true uh and i tell everyone you know that uh everyone has an inner artist right. inside of them and uh i like to teach Art and painting, I, I thrive on that. I always say I aspire to inspire. I love that. And uh, so I'm always looking for the inner artist in everyone. And I try and sort of pull that out of them. Right. And so they can understand the joy of creativity. You're right, and everybody's got it in them. I just had a guest on not too long ago, and they said, because um, we were talking about how the brain works. Right. And he said, if you keep saying you can't do it, you're not going to be able to. That's right. If you say you can, then your right. brain believes that, and then you're going to be able to. Right. Um, that's one thing I would like, because I used to love drawing. Right. And I need to get back to doing that. Mm-hmm. But first, I, I'm in the process of writing my book, so I got to do that first. Okay. <laughs> and then the drawing. So we. So that was at five. That was at five, yeah. Uh, okay. In I'm L- 64 years old now, so. Are you really? I've been... Uh, Doing this my whole life, pretty much, yeah. 
All right. It's, it's more than an obsession. It's more than a passion. It's it's like my whole life. Okay. Yeah. So elementary school, I take it you're still doing the art. Oh yeah. Now when you were up in high, into high school. Yeah. Okay. So when you were in high school. Yeah. What was your plan? What did you want to do after high school? Uh, well, while I was in high school, I would take the train. I, I'm from uh, Pennsylvania, Delaware mm-hmm. County, originally. Um, so yes, I'm a transplant here in uh, Harvard <laughs> County. But um, I would go to Philadelphia College of Art okay. at nighttime on the train. I was an art major in in high school, but I would go to night classes and painting at the Philadelphia College of Art uh, on the train at nighttime. Wow. And then I, and I loved it, you know. And I, so we had life drawing, we had live, you know, live models right. and painting, and that was, of course, a very exciting thing at the time. And then I had children's book illustration, interestingly enough, and I had uh, drawing. So, you know, wow, that was my. Um, but I was a, a fine art major, you okay. know, which, you know, it's kind of there's not a lot of bright futures for that but you know it's it's sort of like i made it happen you got to right. make it happen life you have to make happen yeah you know, it doesn't fall upon you like some magical thing you know now yeah. i take it now this is your full-time job oh yeah absolutely okay well i consider myself sort of retired but i right. I, I never stop so you're like me uh, I, yeah, yeah. I ain't never gonna retire i'll right. keep doing whatever like, i spend I, I have very strange sleeping habits like i'll sleep uh three and a half hours a night like or in a in a in a stretch. Okay. I wake up and I'll, I'll paint and varnish or frame or do my artwork for like uh, four or five hours. Maybe eat something and right. go back to sleep again and do the same thing over and over and over. Wow. You know, that's all I do. That's all I do. I don't. I never sleep for eight hours. Never. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You're probably like me because there's. I mean, I go to bed, but it used to be. Because when I would, used to watch the news, I don't watch anything negative anymore. Yeah. You get those bad dreams or whatever. Yeah. Now it's the opposite. I'll be dreaming and I'll have a good thought in my dream. Then I got to get up and go write it down. <laughs> then we'll yeah. be able to get back to sleep because I'm focused on that. Right. Instead. Mm-hmm. So, all right, you went to college. No, you were going to college at night during yeah. high school. Did mm-hmm. you go in, into college right after high school or did you go into the military first? I went into the military Okay. Yeah, because I was only took the courses at Philadelphia, you know, in, at the nighttime. I never went there during the day, uh, and I, because I always wanted to see the world, so I joined right. the Air Force. I saw the commercials, you know. Yeah. <laughs> from the halls of Montezuma. <laughs> you know, so, all right, you go into the Air Force four years. I take it. Right. right? All right. What'd you do in the Air Force? I was an air. I was a, a fireman. I drove fire trucks, and I worked on the flight line and the control tower for the fire department. All right, wait a minute. So when you went to the recruiter, you, I told what? him I wanted to be in graphic. Uh, of course, you know. But okay. Back in in those days, you could not choose. Right. It was not like a, you know. Yeah, you 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 got what you they got gave what they you. told you. And that was designed according to your uh, aptitude test. Right. So you know. So Interesting. I, I'm a fireman, and they and they asked, and I asked myself why over all these years I like. Well, why? I never wanted to be in the fire department. You know, <laughs> I, I loved it. I had a great experience. Right. I don't regret it by any stretch of the imagination. But I, I never, it wasn't my goal. Yeah. And I just sort of went with the flow and said, oh, well, you know, I'll just do this for, for now. And uh, But I, I loved it. I went to Germany. I saw, nice. I lived in Germany for three years. I speak fluent German. And I, I lived in Germany actually beyond my military time. I worked for the Air Force well, for my service was four years. I came back one year in California, George Air Force Base. Then I went back as a civilian and worked for the Army uh, as a food service. In Germany. In Germany, yeah. As a food service worker on the base, on the air base. All um, right, so when you were in Germany. Yeah. Because I'm sure, all right, like with me, I love food. Yeah, I, yeah. I, you know, if I go to other countries, even other states or whatever, you got to try the food. Yeah. But if you being an artist, mm-hmm. when you were in Germany, I'm sure you went to the museums and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. How was the art over there, say, compared to here? Well, of course, it's steeped in tradition. Right. You know? I mean, the history is just, you know, overwhelmingly uh, deep. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's because you're, you're talking America is like a couple hundred years old. Right. And Europe is thousands of years yeah. old. Yeah. So, you know, you'd be walking down the street and you see a— 
building is a couple thousand years old next to a modern high, sky rise. You know, whereas here, uh, and those buildings were built to last. Right. You know, whereas here in America, everything is a little bit more uh, temporary or more kind of, uh, it's not built for that. Not built to last. <laughs> not built to last. You know, but, At least uh, not now. <laughs> right. But, you know, uh, there's a great uh, spirit in, in, in America. Yeah. And America is a beautiful, is, is a, the most beautiful concept uh, uh, that could, could ever be because you can come here as an immigrant and you can make your own way if you work mm-hmm. hard. And it really is true that there is the American dream. Yes. And uh, it, there's nothing quite like that uh, in Europe. No. So, but Europe has the beauty, the culture, the history, uh, all of that, the romance. It, it's just great. Yeah. But, you know, they're two very separate worlds, you know. That's, yeah, because I've always been fascinated by art and everything in all the different countries. Uh, yeah. And, and it's – so another friend of mine uh, who I had on, he, he owns an Empire Dojo. Mm-hmm. Well, they learn. I'm going to get it named. Sorry, Lewis, if I get the. I'm not even going to try to pronounce what you call it. But the Japanese writing, which is an mm-hmm. art. Oh yeah. And him and Sydney, who also is a sensei there, learned it. But just if you watch them do it, that's one thing, which is very beautiful to watch somebody do it. Yeah. And then whoever thought that writing would be beautiful? Yeah. Excuse but it me. is. It's an art. At least the Japanese writing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when I was over in Japan, just the art in general was amazing. And you don't see anything like that here in the States. No. Um, so, all right. So you started off as an, I guess you could say as an illustrator. Illustrator, yeah. Draw, drawn on the chalkboard. Sure. Um, and then I guess from the, then you went into painting, right? Painting, yes. I started with oil painting. Uh, okay. Because it's, which is actually the most difficult. Um, Why is that? Well, it's the most difficult of the mediums because it takes a long time to dry. Oh, okay. Uh, it, it just has a whole other uh, texture and uh, working capability than right. acrylic, say. Uh, so now, uh, so I did that for many, many years. I love, I love uh, oil painting, uh, but it's more of a procedure. There's a lot more involved than uh, painting in acrylic. Okay. And painting in acrylic is that plop the paint down, add some water, you know. There you go. But uh, oil paint is, you got to be more of a chemist kind of, where you mix in linseed oil and turpentine, and then you've got the different colors that are all ground. Really? Minerals. Yeah, so it's a little bit more involved. Yeah. I didn't realize all that went into that. Yeah, sure. And it, the oil paints are much more expensive, too. Yeah. On the, on the market. Holy so. cow. Yeah. So I take it in, uh, to find somebody that does oil paintings, probably rare now? Well, there's, there's quite a few, but. Uh, I th- I would say that, you know, I once asked my high school art teacher. I said, "What is you know the the diff- how oil paints last for hundreds and hundreds of right. years? Obviously, right? So how about acrylics? Do they last the same?" She said, "Well, it's too soon to tell, but you know uh, because they're a fairly recent invention. Uh, yeah, the, the plastic oil, you know, the the acrylic paints. They they were invented in like the fifties, sixties. You know, so uh, that's when they first came out." Well, what if, I see a lot of people doing watercolors. Watercolors is a whole other world. Whole other world. I would think that that wouldn't last as long. Well, they're def- watercolor is a whole other uh, talent unto itself because okay. you have to paint very uh, quickly. And uh, the amount of water is going to determine the transparency. Oh. So it's not like adding white and creating right. a lighter color. It's adding more water to lighten up a darker color. Oh. Okay. So you got a lot of transparency going on. Yeah. Uh, a lot more technique involved, and it takes a lot more practice. And once, if you make a mistake in watercolor, it's it's more difficult to cover it up and fix it than it is, let's say, acrylic. Really? Right. Or oil, yeah. Now, do you do all three? I do or- all three, but I don't do many watercolors. I, I was yeah. going to say, so what's your favorite to do, oil? I would say it's sort of a toss-up, but I, I kind of lean towards acrylics more really? now because I'm so used to them. You yeah. Know? And uh, but from time to time, I'll return to oil for the sort of that classic vibe, right? You know, and you can get a lot more color range and depth in oil that you can't really get with the acrylics. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, the, all right. So a you- lot of times, what I'll try and do, Rich, is I'll try and fool people. 
by doing a painting that looks like it's done in oil, but it's actually in acrylic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's also a question of transparency. Right. Opaque, transparent colors. Uh, making things look, um, uh, it's sort of an illusion, you know, okay. where you can get a lot of transparency in oil because you're mixing chemicals, basically, oil and linseed oil, and that's creating the layers. You create layers in oil, okay. whereas in acrylic, you might create some layers, but not quite as many not as, as you many. would. Like Mona Lisa has about 30 layers of paint on it. Really? Oh, yeah. It took about 30 years to paint. From Leonardo da Vinci. I had yeah. no idea. Wow. Yeah. So 30, 30 la- years to paint that woman that's looking at everybody. Right. And and 30 <laughs> layers, 30 layers of paint. They the scientists have dissected it, you know, the, the experts and uh, wow. And that's Holy why it has man. this incredible, you know, uh okay, so you have the enigmatic smile. But if you look at the landscape behind the, the Mona Lisa, uh-huh. the depth and the clarity of the of the background is what is really astounding. Huh. So take a look at the background uh, sometime. What the, all right, so one of my favorite artists was always Thomas Kincaid. What did he use, do you know? Was he? He's, he was the oil. He oil was oil, primarily. okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. He did the cottages and the... Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. What, do you, what do they call him? The artist of light? Yeah, the artist of yeah. light. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. God, I wish I had some of this stuff. Yeah. Now, you and you actually teach classes, right? I teach classes uh, for children uh, starting age five or so. Okay. But uh, actually, I teach more young adults and older older, uh, older folk. Uh, and uh, there's two-hour sessions. I teach acrylic primarily. Okay. And there's like a 15-minute break in between. But it's very casual. and it's So all, you don't go into depth about how... You, Everything to add and all that. Well, if I get it, if they let me, okay, I get a chance. Yeah, I'll talk their ear off. But um, I, I like I, I, it. Has to be fun. Yeah. If it's not fun, people are not going to do it. I, you know, I mean, they, they they're there to learn, but they want to have fun doing it. Right. So I try and make it fun, and I try and concentrate on what they want to paint. Okay. So I say, initially, there's a conversation. What would you like to paint? What What are your goals and aspirations as a as a budding artist? Right. And so they'll tell me outright what they what they see themselves doing, and uh, so I sort of pick that from that and decide. And I, but I have lesson plans that I've developed over the years. Okay. So I have my own sort of curriculum, and uh, I have my own method and style of teaching. It's individual uh, teaching. I teach. On an individual basis. Oh, so one on one, like a tutoring. But okay. I also teach classes, group classes. Okay. Uh, as an exception. I Have you ever thought about going to the college and teaching? There? I, 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 more recently, I was thinking of doing that. I was thinking of doing it remotely, actually, because I'm just too lazy to drive. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like this remote thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Well, it doesn't make a big difference. Sort of get out of bed and turn uh-huh. on the computer, and there you are. You know. It'd be like John, <laughs> Professor John. Why are you in your pajamas? Yeah. <laughs> Have another cup of coffee. <laughs> wow, that's I, see, I didn't realize all that about the oils and the acrylics and all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's There's a lot to so it. So it's not just an art. It's a science. I would say, especially oil paints, yeah. 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 And the, the, the myriad of colors. There's so many colors to choose from. Well, you know, oil paints are made from minerals. They're ground right. stones. So, oh. you know, way back in the 16th, 17th century, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci... They didn't go to Michael's and buy tubes. Well, yeah, that's you know, true. They, 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 they had to make these colors. Wow. So they were like alchemists. They were like scientists as well. I, you know, I never thought about it like that. Yeah. They didn't sell the tubes of paint, you know, back then. It was a new invention. Oh, wow. Yeah. So when I'm teaching, I huh. like to throw in... Historical things, things about art history. Yeah, I love so that. So it's an all-encompassing sort of uh, class when you're with me. Well, I, to me, I think it would give the student uh, a, a, um, more, they would appreciate it a lot more, the art a lot more. Right. Because if you, I mean, you know the history about what goes into it, to, to me, yeah, it makes it that much better. Yeah, and there's always stories involved with paintings and, yeah. and with particular artists. And if you know a lot about artists and the artists' lives, mm-hmm. then it makes it really easy to 
make that interesting for someone else. Right. You know, like I'll say, oh, well, that looks like, you know, uh, uh, Henri Matisse, you know, who was like, who would specialize in juxtaposition of different patterns and things, you know, textile patterns, for example. And they'll say, oh, yeah, that's right, you know. So they'll then, they'll start to think along those lines, too. Yeah. And they'll put two and two together, and then they'll say, yeah, that's kind of like uh, – so they're learning art history. They're learning about composition, theory, design, principles, perspective, drawing, uh, all these things wrapped into one, but it all happens in a two-hour session. Wow. You know. All right. So when you go to the art museum, you always see the art. Yes. Do you know of any museum where, where like, maybe you'll have one of Van Gogh's brushes or something like that? Well, oh, yeah. I think I, that would be neat to well, see. Well, I've seen they had uh, the palette, his palettes. Like the oh, wood. really? Yeah, they up in the Netherlands would be things like that because that's where he was from. See, I just think that would, I mean, to... To be able to see something like, oh my God, look, this is what Michelangelo used to, so what? Yeah. To yeah. see that stuff just, to me, uh, it just adds more to it. Yeah. Well, there's so much. There's because so you much. can see what they did it with. Yeah. Which was not, you know, not. Not, not like what you're getting today at Michael's. That we have today, right? <laughs> and though this episode is not sponsored by Michael's. <laughs> <laughs> or Hobby Lobby. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, I forgot about that one. Yeah, well, oh, Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's amazing! I I didn't I yeah didn't realize so all that. so children you know people really enjoy my classes because I tailor it to what they want to do right you know and uh, because there's no point in forcing you know okay we're gonna paint this uh, today and uh, you know up there like a kind of a a dictator or I don't know and your classes moderate. are in person right now oh right? they're in person yeah where, where are all, they they're at? all in person okay they're uh, where I live you know in Happy so, Grace in Happy Grace yeah. at your house well I'm renting a studio okay and they, and they go in the studio have you actually thought about because I mean your art from what I saw from your website is amazing thank you have you ever thought about doing virtual classes for like if somebody from England or Germany wants to take yeah. your class well you know I'm a great admirer of uh, Bob Ross I love, oh, I love Bob Ross. Ross. I, I, like I got his coloring book, actually. <laughs> Do you? Okay. An adult coloring book. Yep. Okay. I, I love Bob Ross, and I love everything. And he was just the most wonderful guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, the hair. I don't know. But <laughs> that was back then. Wish I had that hair. <laughs> but, you know, he uh, he was very, very uh, sincere about what he was doing. Yeah. And he, he loved nature, and he loved life itself. And, and that that shows through in, yeah. in, his, in his programs. And I like to do that. I would like to do that. I would like to sort of be the next Bob Ross uh, if, if I were granted the privilege, you know. Uh, I'm not I, – I'm a little bit more versatile than he is in terms yeah. of themes. and. But uh, my excitement does not wane when it comes to painting. Kelly Jara, if you're listening, uh, I think Harvard TV needs like an artist show. Like, it, it could be painting with John Keaton. There we go. Just saying. Step by step uh, painting. Actually, my father. I, th I think that's how my father learned to paint. Really? Because he was always watching Bob Ross, and then he mm -hmm. started dabbling. Well, in a lot of the Bob Ross things are, you know, they they're time told classic things that, that yeah. they, they still hold true. I mean, you use certain brushes for certain techniques, and the knives, the nut, the palette knives, or whatever. Yeah. Or you have you have flat brushes, you have round brushes, you have liners and right. sable brushes, and all this, and or a. a, a you know, a fan brush will be used for, let's say, foliage in a tree. Right. Or the feathers on a bird. You know, so you know the different uses of these brushes. So once you know that, you really have got it made because, and that's one thing I teach my, my students as well. Right. Is they, this brush is for this. This brush is for that. These colors work together well. These do not. Mm. Okay. You know, like complementary colors, uh, basic, how to mix colors, how to make yeah. colors. Uh, for example, if you take, uh, you want a black color, okay? So a lot of people say, oh, well, I have black, I have black paint, you know? If you take black and you add, let's say, ultramarine blue to it or like a phthalo blue, you can make a more intense black. So there's all these little nuances and all these things mm. that I have learned over the years that make my classes valuable. Right. Uh, because that little bit of information can change the entire scenario of the painting right oh yeah right yeah exactly so 
Who are actually three of your favorite artists? My favorite painters. 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 Yeah. Uh, abs. Well, we've talked about you know Michelangelo. Right. Definitely be one. Okay. You know Leonardo. They're way up there. You know. Right. I also like Peter Paul Rubens a lot. Uh, who's more of a, a Flemish painter from? Okay. The, but a brilliant, brilliant painter. You know. I like some of the the, the modern art too. Uh, in yeah. Ter- even though. It's a little bit more manufactured, you know. I, I I get a kick out of let's say Andy Warhol things with <laughs> Marilyn Monroe. Uh-huh. I get a kick out of it, you know. Uh, I don't take it quite as seriously, but I uh, I admire the humor in it and the yeah. sort of the social commentary, because art is about uh, it's it's about social commentary. You know, I mean, it's got when you to you're, you you're making a statement right. when you design something, <laughs> you are saying something. Right, you're saying, "Hey, this is a beautiful tree. This is a beautiful sunset. Is it a sunrise or is it a sunset? Ah, is the glass half full or half empty? That all is up to you, right? I mean, so your attitude determines your latitude. If you decide it's a sunrise, then it's a sunrise. It's a sunrise. Yeah. But it could just as easily be a sunset, right? Interesting. Yeah. So it's all. I guess it depends on what wall it's hanging up on, right? Whether the well, east wall or the west wall. That, that too. <laughs> that too. But it's all in your attitude. Yeah. You know, it's all in um, positivity. Uh, spreads more positive. Right. You know, the law it's of attraction. Law yeah. of attraction. Yeah. So all right, and then you you you've done books. How many books have you done? I wrote four books about my paintings. Called okay. If there's four volumes. The first one was called Joy and Sorrow. The second one is called Reach React. The third one is called Sunset Dreams. And the fourth one was called Serenity. And okay. they, each of them are a collection of 56 paintings of mine. And they're available on Amazon, those books. And yeah. then I started, recently I wrote a children's book. Okay. And that's my, this is my first children's book. Um, and it's about a giraffe named Gigi who flies to Paris in a plane, in a prop plane. And uh, it's very exciting. And it took me many years to do the illustrations. It's done in sort of a Disney retro style. Right. And everything is done, excuse me, by hand. So okay. it's, it's, it's not a computer-generated book. I wanted it to have that sort of Walt Disney look from yeah, the 30s, like 40s. Like the old feel, yeah. The retro look, yeah. So with the art books, is it just your paintings, or do you also talk about the paintings in it? Oh, yeah, I talk about the paintings. Okay, I, good. The way, it's, the way that one is laid out, Rich, is um, it'll say, uh, it talks about the origin of the painting, mm-hmm. my inspiration for doing the painting, uh, where the painting is now, uh, certain design factors or certain historical information about the painting. Okay. My whole purpose of wanting to paint it is is contained there. Good. And then on the adjacent page, you see the painting. And then there's a quotation from a famous, might be an artist or a statesman or a politician, oh. that applies to the painting and gives you sort of a food for thought. Right. So it's, kind of, there are, it's all sort of linked together. Okay. So you have 56 of those. So it's kind of an interesting concept there. And what, what year did you release the first one? The first one was 2011. 2011. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, because I don't know of many artists that really do that. Because mm-hmm. I've and I've always told my my cousin's a photographer, a yeah. phenomenal photographer. Right. And I've always told him he should do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, which you don't see a lot of photographers do that either. But with you doing putting your art in a book like that, has it helped? With more people, I guess, noticing your art? Well, I would say the first... I wrote four books about my paintings. Uh, it, it never stopped me from painting. Right. Uh, but it got to the point where I was sort of cataloging my own work that way. Okay. You know? oh. uh, and I, I sort of... It was very tiresome after a while and because I really just wanted to paint. Right. So I, I just started... Pay, after the fourth book, I said, well, I'm not going to do that for a while because they take a long time yeah. know, to produce these books. So I said, I'm going to take more time and just paint. Okay. And then I'll, I'll catch up later on. But now it's like overwhelming to catch up because I painted so many in the meantime. Yeah. That hundreds, hundreds, of, I painted hundreds and hundreds of paintings in my life, you know, probably thousands. You know? So so in the back of the books, does it tell people where they can buy your paintings? You could, you could buy my paintings directly from me or from galleries. I have 
uh, three main galleries in okay. the United States. We like I have a I'm with a gallery in uh, New Hampshire. I'm with a gallery in Boston. Nice. And uh, well, I'm doing this show uh, coming up here uh, right. in Harvard de Grace. Um, so I'm looking for galleries. You know, my goal is to do some galleries in Europe and things like that. Oh, so you to will. be all over. You know, but you for the main main part, I just paint. Okay. Yeah. Oh, they'll be in the galleries. Thank you. Yeah, I know they will. Thank you. So with Gigi. Gigi. <laughs> what get, what gave you the idea to write this? Gigi is a book about friendship, number okay. one. Okay. It's about the power of friendship, and it's a very charming story. It's about uh, a giraffe who uh, flies on a prop plane to Paris to celebrate her birthday. Okay. Uh, she has many friends, many animal friends, all here in the United States. Uh, there's an elephant, there's a monkey, there's a mountain cub, and then there's a bluebird. Okay, But she flies over and visits her friend Jean-Claude, who is another giraffe. And um, she decides to celebrate her birthday in Paris with him. So he's given her the grand tour. You know, right. uh, Eiffel, main thing, she wants to go to the Eiffel Tower. Okay. okay. and so Because I've always enjoyed the, um, the juxtaposition of the, the neck of the giraffe. And the the Eiffel Tower, these yeah. two tall things, you know, they look really cool together for some reason to me. <laughs> and uh, so she goes over there and has this wonderful tour with Jean Claude. And then there comes a point where she's, oh, my birthday's coming up, you know, uh, and it's really great being in this beautiful city and exploring with you, Jean Claude. But she starts to get upset and she starts to cry. And she says to him, she says, because she's a young giraffe, you know, she's right. like a year. A year old, <clears throat> and she said, "But I miss all my friends in in, in uh, the, the United States, you know, more or less." So this right. is the, the text. I'm kind of paraphrasing. <laughs> so he, he secretly had called them on the phone, the other friends, okay, and arranged for a surprise party. So they are all coming over on an ocean liner for her birthday party. It's a surprise party, though. Okay, she doesn't know. That's, but she's upset because she misses them, even though she's experiencing the world and, and mm-hmm. having this great time. So it's about that. It's about the fact that the friendship is very important to her. And so that's the moral of the story right. is that you can have all these things, but if you don't have friends that you can rely on or relate to, what what what, what is the value of that? Right. You know? So... Sure enough, she comes out uh, on the street, on the morning of her birthday. There's this huge street party, and then all of the animals come out onto the cafe street, and they're all playing musical instruments, and they roll out a big cake for her, and everyone's dancing. So you have, like, an incidental character named Fifi, who is like a pink poodle, right. and she's dancing. <laughs> and, and all of these things are illustrated in this sort of stylized 1930s style right. on uh, huge, the huge paintings, actually, uh, 18 by 24 acrylics and wow. uh, done in the Disney style, you know. So the big party, they roll out the cake, and then, uh, you know, at the end of it, you see uh, Gigi and Jean-Claude, and they sort of are talking together. She, she says um, basically that, uh, you know, without her friends, she really wouldn't wouldn't understand, you know, right. the whole purpose of life. So, and then it's been a great adventure. And where where will we go next? Basically, so so it sort of leads off into the next story, the next the, the next, next book is going to be coming out. The next book, which is already being written. So, which that ain't going to take you seven years too. Yeah, well, I hope not. I think I've, <laughs> I, I think I've developed a little proficiency. I think it'll okay. be a little quicker. So, are, yeah. are the characters in this book based off of anybody that you know? Well, uh, sometimes the names are okay. because, but the real typical sort of like you got Happy the Bluebird. Okay, right? and and the reason is Happy the Bluebird is from the. Uh, it is a blue bird. It literally is blue. Right, and it's a small bird, but it's always flying around. Very friendly. Um, but it's named after – it's actually got its name from The Wizard of Oz because in that song, this Somewhere Over the Rainbow, it says, Where Happy Little Bluebirds Fly. Yeah. So I named the bluebird Happy for that reason. Interesting. There, so there's little things like that, you know. Or uh, like Gigi is just sort of a French name, but it Giraffe also Giraffe. to some people means um, 
a grandma or, 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 oh, or mama. Okay, yeah. So that a lot of people like that, and so, but it's it's really a like a heroine book, like a girl power yeah. book. So it's primarily written for young girls, say seven, eight years old, who would really identify with this this strong willed sort of character. Yeah, I want to say I want to say that. No? I mean, that's who you, that's who you're, and this is something I've noticed with. Every author that I've had on that has written children's books, yeah, you look at them and you read them. Mm-hmm. Adults learn something from them as well, yeah. And I think they need to get rid of that term "children's" because these children's books out there teach a lot of us about yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. or remind us right. about stuff, especially like with the friendship, yeah, with the friendship and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's I see. I thought Gigi was just short for giraffe. No, the no. GI, you know. Well, there was a famous movie uh, in the fifties called Gigi. Yes, and it, with Maurice Chevalier, yes. and it has so this sort of French connotation to it, connection, the French connection, so to speak. So that's why I put this all together, and, and you sort of kept it that way. Okay. You know? Hey, listeners, ever been caught off guard by a sudden heat wave or cold front? We've all been there. That's why I'm excited about our sponsor for this episode, Eco Cool HVAC. Veteran-owned and rooted in Harford County, EcoCool HVAC is your go-to solution for all things heating and cooling. Whether you're battling summer's heat or winter's chill, they've got you covered with their top-notch heating and air conditioning services (laughs) and even pool heating solutions. Stephen Crodell and his qualified team ensure rapid response and meticulous attention to detail. It's not just about providing a service. It's about caring for the community. Their motto, when you call, they care, and they're there. If you need professional, reliable HVAC assistance, dial EcoCool HVAC at 443-324-9714. Again, that's 443-324-9714, or visit EcoCoolHVAC.com. Again, that's EcoCoolHVAC.com. Here's to comfort all year round, thanks to EcoCool HVAC. So your next book is the sequel to this. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Any other books in the works? Yes, there's another one. Uh, it's another children. I am another actually, children's book. I'm actually okay. enjoying children's books more than I, a lot of. It's funny yeah. you say that because a lot of authors do. It's very addicting once you start yeah. doing them because. You can sort of go off on a tangent you uh-huh. know, in all these places that you could never go before, you know. Uh, so I'm, do, I'm, I'm thinking about one that takes place in a circus, and it has to do with two clowns that kind of have a thing for each other. And, okay. Uh, so it's about that it, it, okay. it is in a simplistic form, you know. See, and, and what a lot of people don't realize when it comes to authors, because you're also the illustrator. Yeah. So... There's more that goes into it. Oh, there's a lot more, yeah, because the illustrations take a lot of time, you know. People don't realize writing the children's books not as easy as it sounds. No, a lot of people seem to think, oh, I want to write a children's book, you know, because they think it's, it's easy. It's like a cool thing to do. You know, a lot of people think it's a cool thing to do. Yeah. You know, and it is a cool thing to do, but it is a lot of work. But the good thing is, too, and I just uh, I had, um, do you know Debbie Jenny, Jennings? No. D.A. Jennings? No. Okay, she's a children's author. Okay. And I know Lindsay Pope. Oh, Lindsay's a sweetheart. Yeah. Yeah, I've had Lindsay on. I just illustrated a book for Lindsay. Which one? It's it's, it's come, Sheldon? It come oh, oh, is it the sequel to the sequel to Sheldon? <laughs> no. It's a it's a surprise. It's okay. it's about it's a children's book that I illustrated uh Lindsay wrote the the text. Okay. And I did the illustrations that we just finished. Okay. So that's coming out in uh, September, early September. Nice. And uh, it's really cool. It's about Harvard Grace. Oh, oh, I think I saw her. Did she post something about that? She probably did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we've been we've been in cahoots. Yeah, she's but good. She's, she's wonderful. She's been on the show a couple of times. She's a wonderful lady. Oh, she is. Real, beautiful soul. She is. And uh, her. Um, Hello, Lindsay. Love you dearly. Because <laughs> her book, Debbie's book, and and. Debbie came and talked to our club, to our Lions Club. Okay. And um, she actually, we actually sponsored some of her books because, you know, a lot of people say, well, it's, a lot of people can't read. Yeah. Well, we don't need to hit hit them in high school. 
Right. We need to hit them in daycare and elementary school. Yeah. Get them to learn how now. Right. And that's what that's what we did. And that's a bit. I think what you're doing there is perfect because it's Thank helping you. the younger kids. Yeah. And the younger kids got. I, who was the other one I had on? Uh, the signing grandma, Marlene Everhart. Okay. And I bought some of her books to actually right. donate to the local daycare because mm -hmm. they're children's books, but they also teach the kids how to sign. Which I oh, think is yeah. a, a oh, the great signing book. grandma. Okay. Yeah. I see. What did I say? The singing grandma? No, no, no you yeah, said it right. You said it right. Okay. Said it right yeah. Okay. Um, actually, and speaking of singing, so, God, let me make sure I got this right. Artists, so you're painting. Writing. Oh, wait a minute. What about the design? When did you start doing that? Well, I used to design a lot of uh, products, like gift and retail products. Okay. I lived in California and in San Diego for about eight years. Okay. And I worked for a company called Lava Enterprises. And I did designs for candle holders, um, all sorts of houseware kind of things. Right. With different motifs on them. Uh, I did a lot of packaging, okay. food packaging. I designed for a while, um, just any, and I did murals out there in, in, oh. in huge, uh, multi-million-dollar houses. I painted ceilings and all this. Did the sort of Michelangelo thing. Are you still doing that stuff out here? Yeah, I know. I will not do that. No. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Too I much do work. not do murals anymore. No. Well, no, you, know, you well, got to get a ball and a ladder too. And I <laughs> that's why, <laughs> yeah. because it's so. I did it for many years when I was younger, and right. I actually had a company. I had like five other artists working underneath okay. me. Okay, and I loved it. I made a lot of money, and I I enjoyed it immensely, um, and I learned a lot of things. Right, uh, working with a lot of really cool people, but uh, I just don't want to do that anymore because it's physically you. too demanding, and if you're working outside on ladders in the elements uh -huh. it just is not i mean i'd rather be in my studio in front of my big easel and paint in the comfort yep. of my home and you know and then put it out there on the internet like i don't that. even do ladders anymore no I oh yeah yeah i know what you mean yeah, yeah it's, it's a like, scary proposition yeah, nope forget it it's a scary proposition yeah right? i don't yeah. want to so when did you get into music oh i've always been involved in music since i was about a teen teenager you know oh really okay i, had, I got a guitar because everyone, I wanted to be a singer, number one. Okay. And I consider myself primarily a singer, a songwriter. But uh, I basically learned the guitar, taught myself like chords through different music books. Right. Like I would find a, a, a specific uh, performer and buy the, the sheet music yeah. where they had the chord diagrams. Uh -huh. And I would be like learning the chord. And uh, so I started on acoustic. And I guess I learned uh, Smoke on the Water was like my first thing I learned. <laughs> Which is funny because that's usually the first thing you learn if you go and take lessons. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. That or House of the Rising House, Sun. <laughs> exactly. Those were the, I knew those ones first. Uh -huh. yeah. So I, I really enjoyed that. I loved the guitar. Uh, but through the years, I worked with a lot of really, really good musicians who were way better right. than I. But I had the voice. So okay. it was sort of a... A compromise and i say well you play the you, uh, you, I, I can't play better than you so you play the guitar and i'll, stick I'll to do the singing. singing yeah and that's how it worked out you know so i played with a number of bands we used to write songs together okay wrote a lot of originals i'm a member of ascap so mm -hmm. i registered all of them so i've written you know over 400 songs wow so i have 10 or 12 albums out you know and about a lot of singles i do a lot of uh recording at home um, I, I used to sing in church. Okay. I love to sing in church. I love to sing in different languages too. I like to sing Italian and, uh, Andrea Bocelli, for example, I, I, I admire immensely. Well, you got to go to the Maryland Italian festival at the end of, uh, was uh it end I definitely of September and October. Yeah. I definitely be there. I love that. Uh, Maybe, hey, Elio, if you're listening, you know, you yeah. and uh, the other two Sicilian tenors get John up on stage. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I would love to do that. That is, I, I just yeah. so Italian and what else? German. I'm sure you sing well, German. Well, yeah, but German it's not such a nice language for music. Let's okay, face well. it. Let's be real here. <laughs> it's a great language, you know. Don't, don't get me right. wrong. Don't get upset, Germans. Das habe ich nicht so gemeint. Okay, but uh, it's not a great language for music. Okay, if you ask me. Italian, Spanish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's the Romantic languages, right? Oh God, yeah. yeah. 
Martin. I mean, you can listen to Dean Martin sing heavy metal and it'll still sound romantic. Right, right. I mean, it's uh, just, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something it, about it's it. It's all in the delivery. Yeah. yeah. So uh, any bands that you played in that anybody might know? Or mainly just Probably. local bands? They were local. I mean, some of them were bigger than others. Right. Uh, depending on where you live. But not anyone uh, famous. I mean, uh, I did tour a lot. I, I toured right. on... I, I went. I did the whole sort of rock star thing with tour buses and and all that when I was younger. I was, yeah, I had enough of that. I mean, it's it's too much partying, too much, you know. Yes. Yeah, and it gets kind of in the way of life, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> I reached a point where I said, no more parties. First of all, it's very demanding to go on stage every night and sing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very physical, you know. So you can't do that for any given length of time and really. Do it well, right? Uh, unless you're absolutely committed to it and know how to control yourself. Well, and the other thing is too. Back when we were doing, you know, when you were doing, it, I was doing it. You, you didn't have the internet. No, you so, had to go out there. Yeah, you had to yeah. go out there. You had to rely on hopefully your demo tape finding yeah. the right person at yeah, the record company. Yeah, you were on your own. Man. There weren't independent fish, labels yeah. or anything. <laughs> it, it was hard. Fish out of water. Yeah. 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 So what's your favorite style to, to um, play and sing? Wow. I really like, uh, you know, praise and worship music okay. a lot, like Michael W. Smith. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, in fact, at the show, I'm going to do uh, Michael W. Smith, Above All. Okay. And I'm doing one Elton John song, your song, with the band. <laughs> so I picked two really good songs. and uh, Wow. I'm going to do those. Yeah, Elton John, your song is a Amazing. One of the greatest songs ever. Written, it is. Yeah, yeah. It is. So who were your biggest influences when it came to music? I would say uh, I, I really like, I, well, I'm a child of the 80s. So, you know, I would say I, I got into the Queen or David Bowie, or Elton right. John, that whole kind of genre. But I lived in Europe, so I had a different slant on it. Like, I didn't see the bands that necessarily were so big here in America. Right. I would see the ones that were more of the European circuit. And so I got more exposure to that. Okay. So, well, like, uh, you know, the new wave, the, uh-huh. the whole sort of new wave uh, and the electronic punk. and uh, the punk. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the punk Johnny Rotten and the Sex oh, Pistols. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All of that. Yeah. That's when punk was punk. Yeah. yeah. Today's punk ain't punk. No. <laughs> Today's punk seems like more like the new wave from the 80s. Yeah. You know, with a little twist to it or something. I don't know. I can't I just, really speak about it. I don't really I, know. I can't f- figure it out. Yeah. I mean. I, I've seen so, some people dress in punk attire, you know. Uh, but I don't know what they're listening to. It, I really don't. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even think they're listening. Yeah. It's. Uh, I don't know. But the music world it. has changed so much. Yeah. And, uh, it's so. Too much fabrication going on. Too much. Sort of a plastic, uh, kind of a plastic mentality, yeah. where it's like, it's like a cookie cutter, you know. Uh, like, let's sing about these themes and these themes only, and uh, it's just not very um, creative in that. It's in not. That I sense. think the creative development has it's very gone plastic, from a lot of you know, it. kind of like oh well, they become products. The, yeah. The, the performers become products who are uh, told specifically by the record companies, what to do. Mm -hmm. And so it takes away all the fun of it, uh, the joy of creativity, where, you know, an artist could be an individual and say, no, I'm going to sing about this, you know. And uh, so it's the ones who who are independent and stand out and do that on their own that are really unique. Yeah. And they're the ones who really deserve to succeed. Yeah. Because the cookie cutter thing has long had its day. And uh, so... In, in the independent, you know, so-called uh, alternative uh, indie world, you yeah, know, um, those are the heroes. You know, those are yeah. the ones that, like, I think Ed Sheeran is really good. Yeah, that young guy. Um, also, uh, I mean, I like some. And he writes a lot of his stuff. He, if I'm oh not yeah, mistaken. absolutely. Yeah, he did a song with uh, Andrea Bocelli actually. Oh really? In, in Italian. Yeah. Oh. Went to his house in a music video. I saw it. It was great. Really Ooh. good, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, there's just uh, not as... He's like a whole different level of yeah. you know, musicianship, yeah. One of the other ones, because, uh, you know, the ones that write their own 
music. Like Taylor Swift is very good at that. She writes yeah. her own songs. Right. Everybody doesn't like her, but you got to give her credit because she's doing what she wants. She's doing what she wants to do. Yeah. To do. Yeah. Um, and there are still a few out there, but not a, not a whole lot of them. Yeah. And the yeah. thing that gets me is, you know, when did the day come where? All right, I understand on TV the lip syncing. Yeah. Because they were, I think, you know, honestly, I think they even did that on uh, the Midnight Special at some time. I'm sure they did, yeah. Um, but when you're doing it in concert, mm. I mean, come on. Yeah. Why? Who wants to pay money to go see Millie Vanilli? I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's just, I don't get it. It's like people are spending good money to go see you in concert. Why are you going to lip sync? Yeah. Or why are you going to have a soundtrack playing behind you? Right. I, I don't think, you know, people do, are not going to a concert to experience perfection. They're not. I think they're going there for an experience. They want to feel something. I, yeah, but in all honesty, I don't think they're getting it. No, well, they're not getting it. That's the problem. I mean, they, um, and, and it's a lot of people laugh at me because I got spoiled. Now when I go to concerts, I, I got to be up close. Yeah. And a lot of people be sitting there, you know, getting into it, dancing. I'm the one that's just sitting still, <laughs> watching the guitar player, watching the drummer, watching the bass. I just like to watch the musicians and you know the skill and watch, see how they're doing it, what they're doing. Mm -hmm. That's just me. Yeah, I'm the type to where I'm the guy that also believes. Well, and it, I ain't believing it's true. Um, when it comes to listening to music, you still can't find anything that sound quality better than vinyl. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you have a good turntable and a good stereo system, mm -hmm. you're not going to find anything better. Right. It's just that something about that sound. And again, I'll sit there and I'll I'll pick out when you played me your one song. Yeah. Remember what I said about the what kind of oh, the, percussion the, the, was that? Yeah, yeah. I like to pick out different the things. Percussive. Yeah, it's you like know. a like a woodblock thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but that's it's just, uh, with that's with, just with, me. a, with a um, reverb and an echo on it. You know, that's what makes it do that it, it, it's which is awesome yeah it's awesome. a different it's something different you know? yeah so with your writing because mm -hmm. you've written a, a like you said a ton of songs yeah um is there any particular one that stands out that's your favorite that i've written yeah quite a few okay yeah quite a, i, I I'm, I'm kind of fond of quite a few of them because okay. they're, they're stories of my life you know they're stories right. they're about experiences that i had and um they belong to a certain time frame. Right. So there's a lot of memories attached to them. They're like a photograph or like a, you know, a, a memory that uh, kind of stays with you. And when I hear that song, I think of that. Right. That time frame and why I wrote that. And so it's it's cause for introspection, you know, where you think, hmm, that's, yeah, I certainly don't think that way now. <laughs> All right. So now I have a challenge for you. Yes. Your painting. Yes. And your music. Right. I know you really can't come out with a CD that does it. You can't really put it into a book. So I think what you need to do is put some videos together. You've probably already done it. <laughs> put some videos together with your music and your art combined. Right. You've already yeah. done well, that? Well, uh, indirectly, I, I have I have some videos on YouTube. Okay. Where I've attempted that. Uh, I have some that are going off in a completely different direction. Right. But um, I haven't really fulfilled that 100% the way I would like. Well, then you, uh, I got the solution for you. Here's what you need to do, John. What's that, Rich? So, all right, what do we have in Havid Grace? You have the State Theater. You have the mm -hmm. Opera House. You have the Star Center. I think coming up for one of the festivals they put out there. Yeah. John Keaton on performing on stage. Yes. Whatever band you have with you. Right. And then on the screen behind you. Is the paintings and the art. Yeah. yeah. I like that idea. I like that idea, yeah. I, yeah. I, I think you need to I do it. I think that sounds like an awesome I idea. mean, when's the last time you actually got out and performed? Uh, well, I like to do karaoke, but that's sort of a cop-out. Yeah, that's, yeah that's, <laughs> It doesn't really count. All right, let uh, me rephrase that. When's the last time you got out and performed your own stuff? Because uh, that's the stuff that kicks ass. <laughs> I don't do it actually. Uh, what? And I haven't done it for years um, because I just like I like creating it. I like being in my studio and coming up with ideas, uh, but I don't really perform it out, outside of that. Um, I, I hope to one day. You when need I have, to. That song that you played for me earlier, mm 
yeah. is freaking awesome. Thank you. And yeah, you need to get out there and share. Yeah, I'd love people. to. I, I, it, when the time is right, I would do that. You know, the uh, time is I would, right I, now. I like to do that. Maybe at the State Theater or maybe at the Star Center or something like that. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, you well, want a place that's got good acoustics. Yeah. Well, both of them have great yeah. acoustics. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. So, yeah, and I, 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 I have to talk to Katie to. and know about that. Maybe they they would, uh, you know, entertain the idea. I think you definitely need to. And and you say your music's on Spotify, right? Spotify, Apple Music. Okay. Uh, so iTunes, now I got to go so. in and follow that. SoundCloud as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because that's one of the things, I just love playing, I've always been into local music. I love mm -hmm. music overall. Yeah. But the local musicians, I want to listen to as much as possible. Yeah. Because they're the ones, well, what's the old phrase? Well, it's not a phrase, it's the truth, the starving artist. The starving well, artist. Well, musicians yeah. are the same way. Oh, yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. And Probably even more so. Yeah. Because oh, yeah, the competition yeah. is is fiercer there because you have more people trying to do it. Yeah. I think, you know, music as opposed to art. I mean, painting, you know, like that. Right. I think there's more musicians trying to break into music than there are painters. I may be uh, wrong. I may be wrong about what? that. I don't know because, I mean. Ever there's a lot of painters. There's there a lot are. Of, it, yeah. it, it's funny. When, when I started the Artist of the Week thing, mm -hmm. I'm seeing – I, I'm not seeing as many. I see a lot of musicians, but not as many musicians as I do artists. Really? But you know what? I am seeing a lot of authors. Oh, authors! I'm seeing, authors. and I think that's because of Amazon, because a lot of yeah. people self-publish now. Yeah, a lot of. Uh, yeah. But I'm seeing a ton of authors now. Here's where I think a lot of authors are missing the boat. Um, I like to call them authorpreneurs. Somebody used that phrase with me. Yeah, I, I, I never like, heard that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Entre well, you think you're an author. You're it, it works. You're yeah. writing books. It's a business. Yeah, it definitely. Um, yeah. But a lot of them don't know how to market their book properly. Yeah, and I think they also a lot of them focus on their local area. Yeah, more than anything else. Mm -hmm. um, which I'm going to give you some things to do after how to get this book even out there even more when we're done great um but they yeah i, I think I, and i don't know why they do that it, which is brought up the thing about you know having a website yeah i think if you have a website you're sharing it with the world you, you have sort of a hub yeah that people can go to you're and, not uh, doing that with just with social media right because you got to have those people following you yeah, but, you got to have a website. Yeah, you know, everyone has, you know, everyone involved in art or promote, you know, or, or business authorpreneurs, <laughs> authorpreneurs, <laughs> authorpreneurs. You know, they they should have a website, and it doesn't cost as much as it used no, to. I have a website, uh, johnkeaton.com, and it it does. I mean, I'm still working. It's always a, it's a good looking website. Thank you. It's a work in progress. Right. I'm always, you know, trying to make it better. But and but and I but I always have new material to add to it, and so it's hard to keep up with, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because well, I do it myself. I, no one's doing this for me, you know. And it's not that hard, is it? No, with the templates they have these days. Yeah. And what are you using? Are you using Wix or WordPress? No, actually, I use a very unusual method. I have uh, that is actually a website for musicians. It's called Banzoogle. Have you ever really? Heard of yeah. Do you know Banzoogle? I've heard of They're it. They're out of Chicago. Okay. And it's really designed for musicians. Okay. But if you know how to do it, you can make it for anything. Yeah. You know, uh, any kind of business, any kind of... Interesting. Anything that you want to promote. It make It's really easy for musicians to right. work. Because you can automatically sell merchandise. You can automatically list products. And it will be directly connected to your bank account. So if someone buys something, it's a... Nice. Directly into your... You know, that into your pocket there. Right. Or uh, you can do um, slideshows. You mm -hmm. can do uh, videos. You can add YouTube videos to your site, bios, pictures, of course. Right. And it's all sort of animated. It looks kind of animated because it's like moving and constantly doing things. Yeah. So even though it's not really animated, it's it's the slideshows and that kind of, that make it look really dynamic. Okay. You know? So I pay... A yearly fee, and I have this great website, you know. It, and it doesn't cost. I know because I used to design websites, yeah. so 
years ago, back in 2000, when I first started designing them, yeah, six thousand dollars for a website easily. Oh yeah, easily. Nowadays, and now keep in mind that was all coded too. Yeah, all coded. Yeah, or using Dreamweaver or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. All that Nowadays too. you got WordPress, you got Squarespace, you got Wix, you got Bandzoogle. Yeah. The one that I'm doing for my for the podcast because uh-huh. I was doing it through WordPress and I was using a thing called Divi. Yeah. But I'm transferring that all over now to a thing called Podpage. Okay. Now it'll still be conversations with Rich Bennett. Yeah. But it's done through Podpage. So people won't see it say Podpage anymore. Mm-hmm. But the reason I'm doing that is because now I can, it doesn't take as, it's not as much work. Uh huh. I can feature my guests more. I can feature my co host more uh, and my sponsors. The feature that I really love though. <laughs> So if somebody wants to leave a comment about mm-hmm. the podcast or a suggestion, mm-hmm. um, instead of going through Facebook or email, there's a little microphone oh, yeah. on the website, and they can click on it and actually leave a voice message, Oh yeah, that's to which cool. I can incorporate into the podcast. Yeah, oh, that's really cool, yeah. <laughs> well, when it comes to podcasts, it makes sense. It really does. You yeah. know, so, See, and that's, so I think that's like $180 it, a year. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That ain't nothing. Yeah. And the do- domain's running like $20 a yeah. year. So, I think my website is like $160 a year. Yeah, that, yeah. It's compared to $6,000 back yeah. in 2000. And it's got all these capabilities. People just need to learn how to take the time to, to take advantage of them. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, it, it is a time. You know, it is time consuming, especially if you're always putting out new stuff. Yeah. Um, now, with me, like with the podcast, it, the good thing is a po- a true podcast like this, Strictly Audio, has what's called an RSS feed. Mm-hmm. So all I got to do is put the RSS feed in the settings, and it right. automatically pulls all the episodes, the images, and everything. Mm-hmm. So that makes it a lot easier. It sure does, yeah. yeah. It makes it oh, yeah. Yeah. a lot easier. Yeah. And actually, do you have a newsletter? I didn't even notice. Yeah, you do, don't you? I think you do have a newsletter. On my website? Yeah. I have, like, uh, a biography in the front. You can contact me at the, towards the end. I don't really have a newsletter per se, but I, okay. oh, I have like um, world premiere or you know, the newer right. things. Okay, what's new? You know, so in that sense, it's sort of like a newsletter, but okay. I, I don't have a specifically one called news newsletter. Like know? a newsletter that gives people updates every yeah. Well, it's just uh, new music or you know yeah. new paintings, uh, okay. or the the Gigi is in there. You know, right, the book is in there. The and event. that's johnkeaton.com. That's correct. Okay. And, and you're you're going to, uh, so we're going to feature a song at the end of this, right? That's awesome. Tell everybody about this song. Okay. The name of this song is called Maybe Next Time Around. Okay. And what it's about is, as I was telling Rick, um, a lot of times in life we go through uh, circumstances where we have relationships that don't quite work out the way we sort of plan or intend or maybe even wish for. Uh, and so a lot of us, we can easily be sort of damaged goods or mm-hmm. uh, burnt children, so to speak, where we burn, burn our hands in the fire. We don't want to play anymore. So um, we sort of uh, have a bitterness, you know, or a, a coldness of heart that we've developed because of these uh, negative experiences. So what I decided to do was write a song where that's sort of turned around where you accept that reality right. that that particular relationship is not going to work out, mutually agree that it's not going to work out, and just say, maybe next time around. May, in the, maybe the next person that you meet will be the right one, if you're speaking in a romantic sense, you know, or uh, if you're looking for that kind of par- right. partnership, you know, then maybe that person will be the right one for you um, so maybe next time around, but not this time, you know, one right. of the lyrics says letting go is never what it seems to be, you know? So a lot of people will say, Oh, let go of that. And what, when you're in that situation, your emotions are running high, you, you know, that you don't want to hear that. Yeah. That's not easy to hear letting go. You know, so that's why I say letting go is, is never what it seems to be. But towards the end, you know, you have to say, well, that was a certain time of my life, and now it's time to move on. Uh, and the sooner you adjust to that uh, uh, development or situation, the happier you will be. 
Right. Because there are many fish in the sea, and some things are simply not meant to be. And uh, not all relationships are healthy uh, or good for you. So I depend on the good Lord, and I, I trust that he knows in, in, that, in that realm, uh, romantically speaking or emotionally speaking, who is right for me. Right. And that he will create a situation where I will find that individual and make it happen. And then I won't have to say maybe next time around. I love it. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> so those of you listening, when after you hear the song, comment back. Let us know what you thought about it. But one more thing for you before, you, before we wrap up. Yes, sir. Because, I mean, you're a very accomplished author, artist, author, musician. Any advice for anybody aspiring to be an artist overall? Because everything that you do, you're an artist. Added. This is true. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. any any advice that you want to any give advice. anybody that wants to get into it? Well, uh, follow your heart and know that uh, talent is great. You know, it's, it's wonderful to be talented, to have uh, sort of these magic hands that God has given you. Uh, but it doesn't all uh, re- rely on that. It takes a lot of work and a lot of sacrifice. Uh, and nothing good really comes sort of overnight like that. So you have to work at the craft and discipline yourself and draw. If you're, go- if you're talking about visual arts, draw, 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 draw. Always mm-hmm. drawing, always drawing. Because drawing is the key to painting. Because painting is only drawing in color. Okay? So keep that in mind and believe in yourself and know that you have limitations like everybody else, but always be strong and challenge yourself to learn about artists, the lives they've led, the different type of styles that they've created or given to to the world to make it a more beautiful place. If you are a musician, sing your heart out uh, and don't let anyone stop you. Uh, Just go for it and speak from your heart and know uh, that Life is a struggle, and it's always going to be a struggle, but you can find joy in music and in expressing yourself because we are creative individuals, and that's the way the good Lord created us. I love it. Great advice. John, thanks so much. It was a pleasure meeting you, and I guess, well, you're going to be back on again for when we do the round, at least one of the round tables. I would certainly enjoy that, Rich. (laughs) I love to be here again. You will be. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir.
Maybe next time around we'll fly like stars across the sky. Hold on, hold on. Maybe next time around. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Please check out the show notes for all the relevant links for my guests. All you have to do is go to conversationswithrichbennett.com and you'll see the show notes in this episode. And if you can, please leave a review for the podcast as well. Meanwhile, check out the trailer for this podcast that I highly recommend. <laughs> Wait, am I recording? You are listening to Stuff About Things, an art history podcast. All right, let's Van go. Hello and welcome to Stuff About Things, an art history podcast. My name is Lindsay, Lindsay I am, hello, and I have my PhD in art history, which I use here on the interwebs to tell you stuff about things. That is what I do, and I hope that's why you're here. I want to share an amazing experience I had with Tar Hill Construction Group when I needed to install a new roof on my home. Let me tell you, they are truly a cut above the rest. Tar Hill Construction Group is an award-winning residential and commercial roofing and exteriors contractor focusing on roofing, siding, gutters, and solar solutions. Proudly serving Baltimore, Harford, and Cecil counties, they make it their priority to make a positive impact in the communities they serve first while providing exceptional services in roofing and exteriors. From start to finish, Tar Heel Construction Group proved to be a reputable and dependable contracted solution. Their quality installations and good communication kept me informed and reassured throughout the entire process. It's no wonder they have been voted Harford's Best Roofing Contractor and Best Home Improvement Contractor for three years running. But here's what really impressed me. Tar Heel Construction Group's commitment to continued service and registered warranties. They stand behind their work, ensuring that I have peace of mind for years to come. What's even more remarkable is their dedication to giving back to the community. They aggressively support and uplift the neighborhoods they serve, making a positive difference in people's lives. I feel incredibly grateful and humbled to have chosen Tar Hill Construction Group for my roof. They have earned my trust and respect for being the only contractor to be voted Harford's Best Roofing Contractor and Baltimore's Best Roofing Contractor in the same year. So if you're looking for top-notch roofing and exterior solutions, Look no further than Tar Heel Construction Group. Visit their website at tarheelconstructiongroup.com or give them a call at 410-638-7021. Again, that's 410-638-7021. Experience the excellence and community impact for yourself. Tar Heel Construction Group, building excellence one roof at a time.